I'm going to take you guys through my carnivore bodybuilding, what I eat in a day. So this is pretty much what I've been doing for the past six months throughout my entire natural bodybuilding transformation, eating as much meat as possible twice per day in the morning and at night. Uh, what should we title this? Uh, Italian boy gets stuffed with meat twice a day. Uh, but in addition to that, I've been having, you know, honey throughout the day. I would say anywhere from, you know, 150 to 200 grams of carbs worth of honey. You know, I've tried experimenting with other carbohydrate sources in the past, and I've only had success with, you know, pure glucose and pure fructose, uh, you know, inhibited pancreatic function uh, since I took that drug Accutane. So uh, there's definitely some very subjective things that I do throughout my day, but a lot of this stuff can apply to you. Uh, so first thing I always do is I take some vitamin D3 in the morning. And this dose really depends on what your current vitamin D status is and you know what your diet looks like. But for me right now, I'm using two to 3,000 IU. So I'll take uh, you know just any liquid vitamin D supplement. I have my own available uh, that you guys can check out, but there's some on Amazon as well. And the nice thing about vitamin D3 is it is transdermal. So all I have to do is I just take like two drops and just, you know, two or three drops on my stomach. And as you guys can see, my skin is really, really tan. One thing I've noticed about taking the vitamin D3 supplement is that it actually accelerates the darkening of your skin. You know, a lot of people say that, oh, vitamin D supplement is poison, da, 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 but, you know, people end up taking too much vitamin D and they're not taking, you know, a corresponding amount of, you know, vitamin K2, magnesium, and other synergistic nutrients that we will be taking with our meal. So if you're able to encapsulate, you know, complete nutrition like our ancestors used to have, uh, like we used to get on our natural human diet, you don't have to worry about, you know, going astray or getting toxicity from any type of dose. Uh, that's really my theme in general for my diet is achieve all of the nutrients as naturally as possible and then replicate what we're missing naturally through supplements. So today for breakfast, I have some steak that is left over from last night. I'm just going to you know, put the oven on high broil and we're gonna warm this up and that's probably about a pound of steak and I need a little more meat so I'm gonna take you know just a stainless steel pan here I have a pound of Frankie syringe meat ground beef and I'm just gonna saute this in the pan this is 70 30 ground beef and if you do the math 80% of the calories are from fat about 20% are from protein. So that's the natural energy to protein ratio that we've seen in our past diets. But since I have a higher lean body mass, you know, that's why I'm cooking this steak. The steak is a bit leaner. Uh, that's gonna give me the extra protein that I anecdotally need. One little tip for you boys and girls is to rub this on your reproductive organs as you know, those specific parts of your body produce hormones that are dependent on vitamin D. You know, so if you're a male, put a little bit on your testes. You know, if you're a female, rub this near your ovaries, rub this near your breast tissue. You'll notice an immediate difference when you do this. Since the ground beef from Frankie's Free Range Meat is from a local farm, you know, I have no problem cooking this a little on the rare side and sometimes I'll even have it raw. But you know, if you're getting ground beef from a supermarket or, you know, somewhere else, I would definitely make sure to, you know, almost cook it through. But, you know, that's pretty good for me. That's where I like it. You know, a little bit of red and pink in there. And I would say it's about halfway cooked through. So our steak should be a little warm. I'll just take this out. And you know, this could warm up a little more. I mean, sometimes I'll like, I'll eat the ground beef and I'll leave the steak in the oven to warm up a little more. So we could do that today. But if I'm really hungry, I'll just eat it cold. I haven't had as much of an appetite in the morning lately. I've been eating like three quarters of a pound to a pound of meat. Uh, and then I'll make up for it at night. I'll have like a pound and a half, two pounds. But pretty consistently, I would say, you know, two and a half to three pounds of meat per day. And I just have it like this. You know, I'll sprinkle a little bit of salt on it if I feel like it, uh, which I did today. Uh, this is a mountain salt that we have on Frankie's Free Range Meat. And this is super, super salty. So you just put a few sprinkles on it and that's all you need. And, and you don't have the sodium content too high. You want to keep you know, the sodium to potassium ratio about one to one. And you'll notice if you start craving more salt here and there. I was using mustard for a few days, but I ran out of that. So, you know, various seasonings and spices to me are acceptable. It really depends on how natural they are. And, you know, sometimes, like, I can really go for ground beef. Sometimes I don't. I definitely 
digest better than like whole cuts. It's pretty much pre-chewed. And one nice thing about ground beef is I find it satiates my appetite easier. You know, so I'll get full when I'm supposed to as opposed to overeating. And your body can only digest so much protein at once. So more is definitely not better. You know, your stomach is only so acidic. You can only produce so much pepsin. So you want to find that happy medium where you're maximizing your protein intake throughout the day. For me, that happens to be, you know, about a pound, a pound and a half of meat twice a day. One thing some of you guys might notice is that you're getting sleepy after eating. And also possibly sleepy after taking a vitamin D supplement. So what you can do is, you, know, you can go outside, get your workout in, you know, just get in the sun, get some fresh air. That helps. Or, since we're all locked inside with the Toyota Corolla, might as well take that nap, right? You know, the blood in your body is going to your digestive system to absorb that food. So if you want to reduce that feeling of tiredness, you can either eat smaller meals or even do raw meals. But I mean, your body needs cooked, raw, and fermented food. So if you're only eating raw food, you know, for me, I start craving cooked food even by the end of the day. Can't even go like a day or two raw only. So I finished about two thirds of the ground beef and I don't think I'm going to eat all of this meat now. So I'm going to start working on the steak, you know, just so I have a little bit of variety in uh, the meal later. And you guys have probably noticed if you've done it, you know, if you leave the ground beef out for eight, 10, 12 hours, although, you know, it goes against the conventional wisdom of food safety, I find it does taste better and it develops more flavor. And, you know, this steak is, uh, is something I made, you know, yesterday morning, actually. So I want to see how it tastes now in comparison. A little bit of salt. It's just whenever the meat sits out, it develops, you know, more bacteria and it really brings out the flavor. And if you look at any indigenous group of people, you know, even now in modern times, um, you know, a lot of people in Mexico, they, they let their meat sit for several days at room temperature to develop more flavor. There's a huge contrast though. You know, you have someone like me who's eating meat that's sitting on the counter for three days. And then you have those nut jobs who, uh, you know, leave milk on the counter for an hour and then throw it out. And this is also a way to get more calories in because, you know, you can definitely eat more ground beef and steak than just ground beef. You know, by adding different cuts of meat, different flavorings, different spices, you increase the palatability, you know, you increase the amount of food you eat. And although I said, you know, you don't want to eat too much, you know, you can push the limit a little bit. Almost forgot. Uh, about halfway into my meal is when I take my supplements. So right now I'm taking five supplements. Uh, the first one was the vitamin D. Uh, here I have some vitamin K2. Right now I'm doing two drops of this. Uh, this is the male performance supplement. Uh, I take the serving, which is six capsules. Uh, this is a copper supplement. This is uh, two milligrams of copper. And this is magnesium, 200 milligrams of magnesium. Uh, you generally want one milligram of copper uh, per 10 milligrams of zinc. Uh, magnesium, I do anywhere from 200 to 400. Uh, if you're consuming dairy, if you're consuming calcium, you definitely want more magnesium. Uh, for the male supplement, I would say you can go higher. You can try double the dose. Um, maybe I'll mess around with that myself. Uh, vitamin K2, you can go you know, very high on the dosing initially uh, to potentially fix the deficiency, but a normal serving from food you know, is going to be one to two drops after the bioavailability is considered. And the reason I like doing this in the middle of my meal is because you know, it's, it's a food. This stuff is supposed to be obtained from food, uh, so therefore by you know, mixing it and churning it in with the food as opposed to hitting an empty stomach, I think it's a little bit more realistic from you know, an absorption standpoint. Now Frank, are the supplements necessary? Well, you know, if you're getting some sun, you wouldn't need to take the vitamin D. If you're eating some you know, raw cheese or fermented products, you wouldn't really need the vitamin K2. Uh, the magnesium would normally be obtained from high quality wild plant foods. The copper, same thing. Or if you were eating you know, a lot of quality seafood, a lot of quality shellfish. Uh, the male enhancement supplement, you, know, you could eat the milts of the fish, actual animal testicles. And for females, you could have caviar or the actual ovaries. But you know, this stuff is an easier way to do that. And you know, depending on your allergies, depending on your food access, uh, that's what will really determine that. So I'm gonna just have you know a couple more bites of this, uh, see how much I get through comfortably. Uh, but oh, one more thing I'm gonna show you guys is the vitamin C. 
So there's two types of vitamin C that I've tried. One is liposomal, which is with sunflower lecithin. And I've heard some downsides to this and that pregnant women shouldn't be using it. Uh, but this is one option. Honestly, I usually forget to take this. I'll make sure I take it today. And then the other one you can take is a acerola cherry powder. I thought I had a bag of it somewhere. Um, maybe I put it downstairs. Acerola cherry powder, camu camu powder, you know, kakadu plum powder, any of these really high antiscorbutic vitamin C wild fruits uh, are acceptable to add to your diet. And uh, I started adding these vitamin C supplements after I stopped drinking all of the raw milk because I was doing like, like half a gallon of like raw sheep milk, raw goat milk per day. That got really, really, really expensive. Uh, you know, even though I kind of fixed my dairy allergy and I was tolerating it really well. I was spending like $200, $250 a week on raw dairy on top of the other food I was eating. So I didn't really want to spend that much money long term. And, and this vitamin C supplement is a way for me to maximize, you know, the antioxidant cycles. Some of you guys might have noticed I also have a liposomal glutathione in there. I only take that if I have a really bad headache. Uh, I haven't had to use it in a couple months. Uh, but, you know, maximizing these antioxidant cycles is something I've spoken about in my immune system video the other day, as well as my understanding antioxidants video. So, you know, you have the vitamin E cycle, which is optimized by just choosing the right fat sources. You have the vitamin C cycle, which you need to consume, you know, high quality raw foods here and there. And then glutathione is all of these nutrients from animal foods that we're consuming work together in that. So uh, I'm going to relax for maybe an hour or two. I'm not that tired, probably just because I took the vitamin D. Uh, I don't think the UV index is high enough today to tan. It's around noon right now, so the UV index should be about right now. But you know, if you go out in the sun and you, you know, you feel it, like I feel a little bit, so um, I'm probably gonna lay down for an hour or two outside. And it's only like, you know, middle of March. It's pretty chilly outside, it's probably 50 degrees. But you know, you lay out in the sun and you get that vitamin D, you'll be warm, you'll warm up. So the overall game plan for today, you know, we already got a lot of our calories in. We're gonna lay out in the sun for an hour or two, get some vitamin D. Uh, we'll do some work, get some packages, drop some stuff off at the post office. Uh, then we'll work out at our new home gym. And then I'll have my second meal. That should really be it for today. A uh, nice relaxing day because of the Toyota Corolla, no one's doing anything. And uh, I don't have to go down to Frankie's to arrange meat today, so. Uh, definitely relaxing. So after I have that meat, I'll take some raw honey and I'll have a couple tablespoons over the next few hours. Uh, so I got a couple different brands here. You know, here I have some Italian forest honey, uh, mountain forest honey. I got some really raw honey there as well. Um, and then that's my family's honey. I got a couple more down here too, I think. Yeah, there's a bunch of really raw honeys down here. And, you know, they have some different products on their website you can check out too. Uh, but that's what I've been rolling with. You know, it has a good flavor, digests pretty well. So if you're not sure if it's worth tanning or not, you can go to willyweather.com and check out the UV index. Uh, today, from about 12 p.m. to 2 p.m., and you know, we have moderate UV. So, you know, by no means are you going to get a good tan. You know, what does it say here? A moderate risk of harm from unprotected sun exposure. Alert in effect for five hours from uh, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, so the government tells you that it's dangerous to get your vitamin D in. Uh, so according to this, you know, your time is kind of worth spending, you know, from 12 to two here. You wanna maximize the UV index because that's when the UVB rays are gonna be highest. That's when you're gonna get the most vitamin D. You know, so I'll go out for about two hours today. Uh, I mean, normally, you know, unless the UV index was like, you know, seven, eight or nine, then I'd go out, you know. Today, normally it's not worth it, but since it's the earlier part of the year, and this is all I can get, you know, especially for the next few days, I think it's worth it. So I laid outside for like half an hour, but as I said, the UV index wasn't really intense enough to really get any vitamin D. Uh, I took a nap for about an hour or two, and now it's about 4.30, so I'm gonna work out earlier today, get it over with, be done by like six o'clock. Uh, so I'm just gonna fill this up with probably five to six tablespoons of honey uh, mixed with water, and I'm gonna drink that through my workout. So I was telling you guys I built a gym in my garage, and it's not quite set up yet all the way, so I'm not going to show it to you guys yet, but uh, we'll be doing some more fitness content for sure. Uh, one of the bars came in today for the lat pull-down grip, and I'm missing a few mats. I'm missing like one or two pieces of equipment, but 
it's pretty much done. So I'm looking forward to doing more fitness content in the blogs as well as just like fitness videos in general. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. So hopefully, you know, sometime next week or maybe the week after I can show you guys the whole home gym setup and then, you know, maybe I can get my routine finished, the workout routine that I'm gonna uh, sell for you guys. But you know, since this is a carnivore day of eating and I haven't really gone over my routine yet in depth, you know, I figured I'm not gonna show you guys much today. So, uh, workout's done. And uh, every time I work out, I'm reminded of why I originally quit bodybuilding, but Frankie boy's got nothing better to do and that's what you fairy boys like. So, uh, in better news, I've always told you guys and I've been pretty adamant against using Tinder, but one thing I've noticed is that if these New York girls don't touch a PP every 36 hours, they get desperately thirsty. So there's definitely some new opportunities arising and uh, I might have to indulge in some, uh, uh, some swiping. But I have to do a consultation right now. I think it's around 545. And then I have to do my live stream right after. So normally, you know, I would try to eat my second meal right now, but it's looking like I'm not gonna get to eat until like 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night, uh, which is okay, but you know, usually I try to get that meal in earlier and get to bed earlier. Uh, my schedule's been all over the place lately, but uh, what are you gonna do? Smells like, uh, smells like, uh, smells like dirty New York girls. <laughs> so it's about 10 o'clock. I'm gonna heat up my leftovers from earlier, and that's what we're gonna eat. So we got the steak and the ground beef that have been sitting on the counter all day. Just throw this in the oven. Maybe take like 10 minutes to warm up. What's absolutely hysterical is how many dudes on Tinder are dressing up like girls and putting themselves in the woman category. I just Guys, I, I was literally laughing for like 10 minutes straight earlier. It was, it's, it's just, it's so, I don't need to be mean, but you know, when you're like on there and you see like a guy with five o'clock shadow wearing, it's just, oh, oh, save it for another day. Supplement wise for dinner, all I'll have is uh, some copper. Uh, so just to keep the copper to zinc ratio correct in the diet, uh, I will have, you know, correspondingly, you know, this is going to be two milligrams of copper because we're probably eating about, you know, 20 to 30 milligrams of zinc with the meat. Uh, so I will have the copper. Um, you know, you can do some vitamin K2 with the meal if you want. I find that a lot of those other supplements do kind of stimulate you and they make it hard to fall asleep, you know, especially the vitamin C. So if I do have a second meal, I'll just have the copper with it. So here's the last meal. I think I left it in the oven a little bit too long. Hopefully... It's not completely overcooked, otherwise you might have to uh, make something else. And I constantly find it so interesting that you know, the body switches between craving, you know, raw and cooked foods as well as fermented foods. So, you know, this like crispy, well done beef tastes pretty good to me right now, but you know, maybe a day or two from now, I'll want that rare steak. So I ate about another pound of meat. I'm not as hungry as usual. I think it's because the fat content of that ground beef is a bit higher than what I usually have. Uh, usually I'll have some 80-20 or uh, just some steaks. Uh, that's probably also why I didn't have as much honey as I normally do today. Uh, and I won't have any later. Uh, but normally I will keep this, you know, a little bit leaner, a little bit heavier uh, towards the protein as opposed to the fat. And, you know, I'll substitute in some honey or something for uh, that extra energy so my body doesn't have to synthesize all the glucose and just giving the body what it needs. So uh, what my other meals might look like throughout the week is some liver to get in some vitamin A. I'll have you know some fermented foods here and there for vitamin K2, whether it's raw cheese, uh, usually raw cheese. And then for omega-3s, I'll have some caviar, some fish eggs, or some lamb brains. And after you've fixed all the nutrient deficiencies in your diet, you, know, you don't really have to have those foods that often. I would say like once a week, maybe you know once every two weeks in a decent to moderate amount. Uh, raw cheese though more often like the liver and the brains you know you don't have to be eating that stuff every day and there's definitely a point of diminishing returns but as with everything you know see how you feel with an increased omega-3 intake you know see how you feel with higher amounts of cheese lower amounts of cheese a lot of this stuff is pretty anecdotal and you can generally go with your natural hunger signals to dictate what your body needs uh, so thank you guys for joining me uh, if you have any questions please leave them down below in the comments uh, if you guys would like this ground beef or the ribeye we have these on Frankie's free range meat 
and some of the supplements are on organsupplements.com. Uh, you guys can also go to Frankie's Naturals. Uh, maybe I'll show you guys some of those uh, hygiene products in my next uh, vlog, as well as frank spacom if you guys want a free carnivore diet meal plan. Thanks for joining me, guys. Hope you're not bored out of your minds.